All right, cool. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming today. Um, we'll try and keep it pretty short um, because probably everyone's got their dinner to go to if they haven't had it already. Um, so today we're going to be looking at regatta hosting. And I know a lot of people on the call today have already hosted the regatta, their own regattas, which is great. So as I said before, please feel free to jump in with your own input or questions. Um, a couple of people may be thinking about running their own regattas and I think you guys having done it yourself, you guys will have the most valuable information on that. So feel free to chime in when you feel like it. All right, so today what we're gonna look at is um, three things. The first will be the regatta hosting handbook, which a lot of you probably have seen before. Um, we've made some um, updates to that hosting handbook. Uh, we won't go through the, every little thing in the handbook because it's quite long, but what I want to focus is on is the couple of changes we've made um, and what kind of we're paying particular attention to and we'll give a bit of background onto why we've made those changes. Um, after that, Dylan's gonna talk about the actual regatta application form and kind of the process uh, we go through at DBSW to help you get your regatta up and running. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna go through the event safety management guide, which is another fairly new document that we've been using internally at DBSW for a couple of years um, that helps with our managing safety at our events. And now we've basically got a club version. So you guys have a pretty comprehensive safety management guide that you don't have to do your own work on. You can just pick that up and use it yourself to run, run the safety aspect of, of your own regattas. So I'll just share my screen and we'll have a look at the regatta hosting handbook. Cool, can we all see that? Yeah. Great, cool. Okay, so this is version six of the hosting handbook. I'm sure many of you have seen it before. Um, for those who don't know, this is basically our Bible on how we run uh, regattas in New South Wales. Um, it's been around for quite a rat while and every version it gets a bit better. Um, like I said, I don't want to go through everything in detail, but you can see here, um, it has literally everything you can think of um, in terms of how to run a regatta. If you want to access this yourself, let me just, I'll drop the link in chat for you guys. If I can get to it. It's right. Dylan, do, if you can, can you drop the link in chat? Um, otherwise, it's also on the DMSW website here. So if you go to resources, club documents, um, and then there's a regatta section here, which has all the forms to, and all the documents we're talking about today. I've printed it out. Uh, so the first couple of pages here just gives you a really tight overview of everything to do with um, running an accredited regatta. So what you have to do before the day, during the event and after. So if you just need a quick checklist of, okay, this is what we need to do to um, run a regatta, refer to those first couple of pages. So the first change we've made with this document is we've put in um, the importance of having an organizing committee. So one of the reasons we've uh, um, added this is kind of in our chats with clubs um, running their own regattas, the ones who've had a bit of struggles is that in some cases, um, a lot of the time clubs are putting the onus on the regatta being run by one or two people and often mistakes have happened or the regatta hasn't been um, run as, as efficiently as the club would like because there's just basically too much pressure and too much work on the one person. So what we're recommending now is that all regattas have an organising committee of at least three people. Um, we don't really define those roles. It's really up to you guys. The only thing we've suggested is um, basically kind of having a chair of the committee and also having um, a safety officer be part of that committee. Other than that, it's really up to you guys what roles you'd like to see on that committee. Um, we'll talk a bit about uh, who can be part of that organizing committee a little later as well. Um, so we've also got, there's a lot of venue stuff. I'll let you guys go through this in your own time if you haven't seen it. Um, safety is, safety area has been expanded upon. The biggest change being, and you'll see from DMSW hopefully in the next couple of months, um, some more expansion on this is the advisory group has created a safety officer role. So again, talking to clubs and the, a couple of clubs that had some unfortunate incidents at their regatta in the last couple of years. One thing we found is that unfortunately safety was kind of an afterthought. It was 
rather than it being done by a separate person, it was kind of, oh, you know, Jane, who's running the volunteers or organizing um, boat loading or something, she can, she can just do safety as a side job, um, which unfortunately in some cases led to safety falling down the list of priorities. And then when something did unfortunately occur, the regattas didn't really have an appropriate response. So our suggestion is that you look at having this safety officer role. Um, and like I said, that would be on the committee as well as a safety officer on the day. Uh, yeah, like I said, DMSW has been working on like a document um, for clubs to have a safety officer and what that person can do. Um, it doesn't have to be a trained expert person. That's where it comes in what the learning materials will be providing as well as the event safety management guide we'll go through later. It's kind of a Bible for people to, who are not trained in safety that they can still do a good job at a regatta and keep everyone safe. Um, let's see what else we want to go through. Documents you have to complete, you guys know that. Council approvals, aquatic licenses, most of you will be familiar with that. Budgeting, you'll know about that as well. Um, we've put the, uh, all the recommended official levels are in there. So obviously it's very important that we have appropriate level officials to run a regatta. Um, it's, not, it's not mandatory, it is desired. Um, but I think many of you know, the more like, the more you have experienced officials that know we're doing, the smoother a regatta will go. Uh, again, suggestions on how to run the day, race draws. Um, this is a new section as well that we've added is the competition control and officiating. Um, so just to kind of give clarity to the people running the regatta and the officials you have on the day on who's in charge of what, kind of before the regatta and during the regatta. Uh, so this section basically says um, you're, you've got your organising committee, which does all the work beforehand. And then on the day you have a competition committee, which is your, made up of your officials that run the day. Um, part of that uh, officiating group on the day also has at least one representative from the competition committee. So it's not, you know, two, two groups working separately. There is some crossover and some communication. So if you're running a regatta and, you know, the wind comes up or the weather turns really bad and a decision needs to be made if do we delay racing or cancel altogether, that's... Um, with the officials and whoever's on the competition committee, they can meet together and they can make a decision as a group to decide whether to go ahead or not. So um, this is a suggestion basically. So everyone knows exactly what their roles are and when we need to make those important decisions that we can make it as a group and that everyone's across it. And it's not just oh, the chief official on a whim decided to cancel racing or, you know, the chair of the chief committee decided to, um, you know, cut finals racing or something like that basically working as a group to, to decide how those things will go forward. Um, some more paperwork stuff. And then we've got a small section on um, what happens on race day. Hopefully all that preparation work before has prepared us for that. Um, and then a short little section on what we have to do post regatta. So, you know, sending results through, if there's any incident reports, sending that through to us. Um, yeah, those kind of things. Um, appendix items in this. All your official roles and exactly what they do. The safety officer one is in there now. Um, this will be expanded upon later, but the very basics of what that safety officer could do is in there. Yeah, I think that's about it. Re recommended equipment. Most of you guys will know what you need for the equipment and then the application form, which we'll look at a sec with Dylan. Um, I think that's it from this form. Okay, and then again at the bottom here, we've got just another checklist of that you saw above at the start of this is everything we have to do for to run an accredited regatta. All right, cool, Dylan. You ready to look at the uh, application form? Yeah. Do you mind uh, Ramsey just continuing to share your screen and pop it up? Yep, I've got it here, so that's fine. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, for those who may not know, my name's Dylan, and I'm the new program of. I guess you can say seven months in now, the new program and events coordinator for Dragon Boats, New South Wales. Um, my role effectively uh, for the regatta application form is to review the regatta application form submitted by DBNSW clubs and ensure it meets the necessary requirements for approval. Um, similar process to how it was done in the past, as Ramsey stated, however, it's slightly more comprehensive in that there's further information which needs to be provided on behalf of the clubs. Um, the form essentially allows DBNSW affiliated clubs to apply for their regattas to be accredited by DBNSW. Um, its purpose is to ensure that each club is successfully meeting the DBNSW requirements in a hosting 
a regatta. So aspects such as your safety, operations, key roles, formats, and times are all taken into consideration. Uh -huh. um, there are five, uh, there are five um, sections to this application process, essentially. Um, number one being obviously the applicant's details, so who's submitting the application from which club. Um, number two is the regatta information, so the name of the regatta, um, the proposed date, uh, what, what venue is, uh, where, the venue, sorry. Uh, and then we ask for, we require a couple of other things as well, including um, confirmation from the council for approval, um, aquatic license approval from the RMS, um, what's the racing distance going to be, um, what are the proposed entry fees, um, and furthermore, which you can see within the document. Um, section three outlines the organizing committee chair and key officials for the regatta. So as Ramsey stated, we've um, introduced a safety officer now. Um, we need to know who the chief official is going to be, the chief judge, the water umpire, chief starter, and sweep coordinator. All your fundamental um, official roles, we need to know these things um, prior to the commencement of the regatta. We also want to know we'll be taking care of the water safety for the event as well as first aid. Uh, section four refers to the Sorry, fees Dylan, of the I'll regatta, just, which I'm sure. Dylan, I'll just jump in on there. Um, just to let you guys know, we are very aware that this, this form is probably the first thing you'll do and probably by this, you know, a months out, possibly a year out, you not, might not necessarily have those officials in place by then. So that's completely fine. You can still submit the form. We just at some point during the process, closer to the regatta, just need to know um, who your officials are. And the reason we do that is because even though we had those advertised levels of what people should have, often we found that there would be some regattas yeah, it would be. It was a rarity, fortunately, but sometimes people wouldn't have the full complement of officials that are recommended to run a regatta safely. So, um, it's fine if we know this late in the process, as long as it's just before the regatta, who your officials are, and then we can check out who you've appointed. And if we, you know, unlikely, but if we think there's an appointment there that's really not on, we'll let you know. But I think you guys pretty much know to have good officials in place where we can. Correct. Uh, so continuing uh, section four, as I said, refers to the fees of the regatta and section five is just a declaration. So confirmation by providing your full name, date and signature. Um, and we require a couple of things before and after the regatta as well. So um, this is sort of as a means of supporting each club with their regatta. So before regatta, as an example, um, we obviously need the application form and we ask this to be um, filled and submitted at least three months in advance um, for planning and obviously adding it into our calendar to ensure we have no uh, clashes and so forth with other regattas happening. Um, we want to know the appointment of their safety officer, as I stated, um, the aquatic operational plan, um, approval from the RMS for the aquatic license, um, list of key officials, copy of safety management plan, um, name of um, who's going to be taking charge of the water safety and first aid provider and copy of the entry from uh, for approval, obviously. Um, and then post regatta, um, any non-club members which attended the regatta, we need to know these things. Um, copy of the official race results for publishing so we can um, post um, you know, the results of the day and also a, a report from the chief official. So a post regatta report, just pretty much outlining how the day went, any issues or concerns, what was good, what could improve, um, and what the club may need help with in advance, uh, sorry, moving forward for future um, aspects. So we asked we ask the above to ensure we can assist in any way with clubs needing assistance. Uh, ultimately, if each club can submit the application form tipping, ticking all boxes, then obviously there's minimal things we need to do on our hand. However, um, a lot of the time, I'm sure there's that there are certain aspects of this application form that may um, not be filled in or, you know, clubs may need assistance with. And that's where we want to step in and try to help um, wherever we can to the best of our available uh, possibility. So um, that pretty much essentially makes up the regatta application form. Um, and yeah, I look forward to receiving all your entry form uh, application forms in the future. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Dylan. So that's one thing I really want to emphasize is what Dylan was saying at the end there is that we're fortunately in a position now that I've been freed up from events and Dylan's a full time dedicated events person. Uh, we really want to support you guys in running your regattas. Most of you already run your regattas and do it 
uh, quite well independently. But if there is anything we can do, Dylan's the person you go to. So it doesn't have to just be a case of we have to just fill out a form, flip this stuff to DMSW and, and not worry about it. We are there to help you if you guys do need help with anything. Um, so really, if there's anything to do with the regattas, please reach out to Dylan. He's there to help you. That's part of his role. Um, so please let us know. Yep. Um, was there any questions either about the regatta hosting handbook or the application form at this stage? Or did anyone have any feedback or anything? Um, um, Phil from Dragon Boat, Flaming Dragons at Port Macquarie. We uh, sought your assistance in getting some officials for our regatta earlier this year. Yep. Um, how many all three officials are there actually floating around who would be able to fall uh, to assist with chief official, for example? I wouldn't know off the top of my head. I know it's it's we're struggling at the moment across the state, even for our own regattas in New South Wales, it does tend to be the same few people. And I'm, I think probably up north, it, it's probably a very similar situation. Um, I know when OSGBF made it, um, having to get your official requirement to renew it every year made it a lot harder. I know they were charging a $15 fee to renew that as well, but that has gone now, which is good. Um, but you're, it's definitely, we are definitely in a position where there's not a lot of level three people. Level one officials were, we have quite a lot. Um, I think the interesting thing we found is while we have a lot of level one officials, we have very few willing to step up. And from from what I'm seeing, the reason they do it, do that is a lot of people are curious about what it takes to be an official and kind of how regattas works. So they'll go do the level one officials course. But when it comes to actually volunteering and officiating or, or going up that ladder, um, there isn't there isn't that interest. So. Um, yeah, so it is a struggle for us at the moment, and it's definitely something we'd like to work on. But it's kind of a case of we guys need your help to kind of create that enthusiasm. And if you do have any ideas on how we can encourage people to decide, you know, rather than, I don't know, just doing boat loading or deciding to paddle in the day, um, keeping these people in our sport and asking them to officiate and go up that levels, that would be very useful. So I'm definitely open to ideas on that. And even if it's a case of I don't know if there's a regatta really struggling to find any officials, even if we need to like financially support that with like sending people up, you know, and paying for accommodation and travel costs. That's definitely something we can look at as well. Um, you might have seen a couple of months ago, we did announce that we are covering all the course costs for people to move to level two and three officials. Um, so they don't have to pay anything anymore. All they have to do is, well, they pay initially, but we'll reimburse them fully. So as long as they attend, I think a couple of regattas over a few years, then we'll fully reimburse their course costs. And we've done that in the hope that we can start encouraging more level two and three officials, because it's a problem for you guys doing your own regattas and it's a problem for us. So, um, please let, let anyone who is interested in that official role know that that option is there if they would like to, um, yeah, because we're doing everything we can at the moment to try and get those officials. Good, thank you. That's right. Um, Ramsey, um, Rosemary from Bathurst here. Would it be worth considering <clears throat> the officials course not lasting 12 months, but maybe two years to keep um, people in the role? Yeah, I mean, we can try and advocate for that. Um, when they announced the, the charge and the change from, I think it used to be four, four or three years now down to 12 months, mm -hmm. um, to have, have that brought back. Fortunately, we did get them to agree to um, not charge anymore because I think it was yep. such a turn off to, to people for that. Um, I can go back to them again and say, the feedback we're receiving is that having to renew every one year is very difficult and maybe two is more appropriate. OSDS perspective is that they wanna make sure their officials are, um, are brushed up on the rules every year. So they don't, they don't want to go too long. And I think part of that accreditation <clears throat> process is you have to do an online test. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that I understand where they're coming from, but in reality, it makes it very difficult for us. And we've got a lot of people um, who will just go, I can't be bothered. It's too yes. hard to do that every year. So we can pass that feedback on again. Particularly in regional areas where we struggle to get um, anybody, you know, to, to take on some of these roles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. It's Denise here yep. um, from Bitty Dragons. Um, one of the things we've found with um, getting with our officials, because we're relatively isolated in Wagga, in order for us to, to get a gig and, and do officialing, um, <clears throat> it's actually quite costly for us. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if I was to try to go up to Sydney, um, I won't go unless it's for two days. 
um, because I've got to make it worthwhile. There's the cost of travel, then there's the cost of accommodation. And it becomes something like a $400 um, exercise to go to a regatta, pay for accommodation, pay for everything, just to get your hours. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that regional areas we find very, very difficult. Some of our officials have completed their um, level one in the last 12 months and haven't been able to get to a gig because of all sorts of reasons. Um, yep. and, and particularly going through the winter season too, it's going to get better now. Is there any sort of thought about supporting members in regional areas to some extent in being able to um, be able to get to the regattas in terms of cost and so on? Uh, we definitely have already in place higher level roles. So if you get appointed as something like a chief judge or a chief official, that there is compensation for that. But for a level one, I'll be honest, no, we haven't thought about that, but it is an interesting idea that we can discuss internally. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a case we just work with OSDF to identify these people that are in regional areas that don't have a lot of regattas they can go to. Um, north, probably North is has probably quite a, more opportunities than the other regions at the moment. The West is getting a lot better now that the West is hosting a lot more regattas, which is good to see. In the South, we really don't have anything. I think most of them, the only opportunities there would be to go to to the ACT, which is an option, but again, that's still a lot of travel time for people. So It is, um, and it's fairly restrictive in that um, we've tried to access ACT, but mm. they have their own group of officials, smaller regatta, fewer people needed. Mm. Um, and I was told that they don't need as many people yeah. Um, and so I've got a couple of people in our group that are really thinking, what's the point? I haven't been able to get to anything. Um, now I'm have to re-credit and I haven't even done anything. Mm. Um, it, it's just an issue facing us for a whole lot of things, being in regional areas. Having these Zoom meetings are fantastic. It's mm. improved communication for us a lot. But um, in terms of officiating, I think a lot of people would like to do it. But it's cost prohibitive. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, leave it with me. We'll take that as an idea. Um, like I said, we've already made the steps of offering to pay for people's courses to go up to level two and three. Maybe that's something we can look at as well as part of it is maybe compensate people to attend, you know, to at least attend one yeah. regatta after they've gotten their official accreditation, especially if that encourages them to actually use it. Cool. All right. Thanks, Denise. Uh, did anyone have anything else? We have a questions ranging in the chat. Yeah, do you want to read them? Yeah, sure. So Pearl asked, when was official fee $15 scrapped? One of our members has recently been charged. Uh, and what are the guidelines on who gets accommodation, food, etc.? cetera? Uh, so the first part is they didn't really make a big announcement about it, but I think it was about six months ago now. They um, have scrapped the $15 charge. Um, I had to ask OSDF if that was the case, but they have confirmed that is the case. I also found out this was actually came up the other day. If any of your officials have received an invoice for $15, please don't pay it. It's some problem they're having with the Rose Swartz system where they're still, it's automatically sending out renewal invoices, but there should not be a charge. So um, Pearl, if you do have that person that did pay $15, I would chase up OSDF to either cancel that or get reimbursement because no one should be paying $15 to renew their official accreditation anymore. Okay. Um, and then the second part, uh, I'll see if I can find it uh, on our website. I'm pretty sure it is just chief officials mainly, but it's a question that's come up. Yep, it's in that we recently looked at, touched it up again in one of our policies. Um, just see if I can find it for you. There we go. So if you go to the website, resources, policies, and guidelines, all the way at the bottom here, there's an expense and reimbursement policy. Um, it refers to the um, uh, reimbursement system I was describing before about us paying for level two and three courses. And also this document also outlines um, what we cover. So this is what Dragon Boats New South Wales covers. So we've got here, chief official, safety officer, chief judge, race secretary, starter, water umpire, head marshal and chief boat loading. Those are the roles that um, are eligible for reimbursement. Um, like I said, this is for DBSW. Clubs don't have to do this, but they also can use it if they want. So if you guys are looking to fill those roles and they did tend to be the most important roles and you're looking at, well, who do we have to pay for to get up here and who not, those are the current roles. So you're, you're welcome to use this policy as well. 
um, to determine that if people are asking those questions. So, so that's yeah. it, that's it, Pearl. Thank you. Anything else before we move on? Was there another question, Dylan, or was that it? Um, only other question. Um, Beth and and Bill suggested we need a pool of officials that we know who we can draw on. Um, so they've made an example. We could use a Wagga official for Regatta if we knew who was available, which is a good point. Is it something we need to move forward? I guess work on and communicate with each club to see um, how we can make that possible. Yeah, and that's kind of part of Dylan's role. So if you guys don't know of officials personally that you've reached out or you have reached out and you haven't got any success, please go to, to Dylan or myself and we've got that information. So we can tell you who to approach or we're happy to approach them for yourself. I know Grafton just the other day asked us to reach out to all officials to just put the word out there about their regatta and see who's interested. We're more than happy to do that. So we've got those mailing lists. So if you need to, just get in touch with us and we can put out the word for you. Um, to help you out there. So just let us know and we can do that for you. All right, we'll move over to the event safety management guide now. Um, we'll whip through it because this has gone a little longer than I was hoping, but that's all right. So have a look. All right, so this is the uh, club version of the safety management plan. This was a, um, it's a very comprehensive safety management plan that was developed by Steve Lay and Shane Knight while they were at Surf Life Saving uh, New South Wales, and then they've developed. We've basically modified and developed our own version to be appropriate for our own use when we're running our own regattas. Um, and also now we've made this version for for clubs. Um, so it's quite a big document. I think it's eighty two pages, and it's really comprehensive. Um, but we've tried to make it as simple as possible for for you guys to to use. So the way we envision it is once you've appointed a safety officer, um, this is the document you give to them and they should be, they don't have to be experts in it, but should be familiar with it. Um, everything in regards to safety is kind of there and written for you. So how to handle, you know, bad weather events, emergencies, anything you can think of, you know, doing risk assessments, it's all in here. Um, and I'll just, I'll quickly just go through um, how we've set it up and, and how you guys can use it yourselves. Like I said, lots of things in here, emergency care, logistics. Um, we refer back to the, it's the same, it matches the same stuff that's in that uh, hosting handbook, but how you handle with suspensions of, of competition, that's all, that's all in there. Uh, so the way it works is you'll see throughout the document, there's this yellow highlight, which it says insert club name um, or insert full name. Basically these sections are where a club will come in and fill, fill out their own information details to basically make their own version of this document. Uh, so all you have to do is basically go through it. And every time you see a yellow highlight, I'm just scroll a bit faster. Anytime you see a yellow highlight, that's where we enter our own club details. Um, there's also these little section guided notes, which gives you a little bit of instruction, further instruction on each section, um, but you'll see it here. So put, putting down who your safety officer is, um, back up to the safety officer, who your competition committee is, um, basically telling the, telling this telling everyone who is in charge. And then we go into the nitty gritty of, you know, how we handle emergencies. Um, again, if we just look at the highlight area, that's where we fill in our own information. Other than that, we, we don't really need to touch anything else. You're welcome to make your own adjustments if you would like, but generally speaking, we've set it up so everything is written for you and all the procedures are done for you. Um, so like got major incidents, how we deal with weather, um, personnel, so who's in charge of what when something happens, when a capsize happens, um, communication, what the communication procedures are, that's all done for you. So my suggestion is um, once a club appoints a safety officer, have someone from the competition committee and the safety officer go through this together just so they get a, a rough understanding of it. And then you make your updates and then you print this out and you have it at the regatta. So in case of emergency, um, assuming there is time to do so, that you have a guide to say, okay, well, this just happened, what's the procedures? So the, the one that makes most sense to me is a weather incident. Um, you know, we've got a storm coming, what's, what's the procedures on how we handle it? Who's responsible for what that is in here? Um, yeah. So what else do we have? Suspension of committee, emergency response plans, risk management. So it has all the stuff if you wanna do your own risk management, uh, assessments of your site in the regatta, um, appendix stuff, bunch of stuff here. 
none of this is required. This is just a tool. So if you um, want to give some guidance to that, the organizing committee and the safety officer, this is a great document to do that, especially when they're starting from, from, from basically nothing if they're not trained in safety. Um, the other thing I'll say, I think it's on here, is this one, training event uh, checklist. This is the same one you guys would be familiar with when you're um, doing it on Safe 365 on your mobile before you go out into the water. So it applies both for training and events. And this is uh, what we use at our DMSW regatta. So part of the process is when we get there straight away, coming up this next weekend, is Dylan will get his phone out and he'll go through Safe 365 and he'll do an event um, checklist to basically do a, a risk assessment on the day to see how the um, how we're looking and then if there's any issues then he'll address that before we start racing for the day um so that's all digital there's a digital version of that um and that's on your safe 365 app so if you have a safety officer and you need them to be added to safe 365 if they're not already just flick me or dylan an email and we can set them up on there so they can have that tool to do on the day otherwise feel free to print out your own paper version and you can do your own own checklist that way as well um i'll just see if there's anything else worth highlighting site inspections is it's super super detailed um so feel free to use that if you want to um i think that's about it this was designed and used for like really large scale surf life saving australia events so like i said it's very comprehensive and, and very good um i think that's about it does anyone have any questions on that no Cool, all good. All right, does anyone have any other questions in general about regattas or regatta hosting or anything like that before we hop off? Or any feedback? Is there anything that we're not doing that we could could do to help you guys outside of the uh, help with officials? No, cool, we're all happy. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's been really good. The one thing I did want to mention before we go as well, you would have seen in the lead of the season, Dylan reached out to a lot of you guys who are already hosting regattas to get you guys on the on the schedule ahead of time. Um, I think it's been pretty successful and hopefully you guys agree and it's something we'll, we want to keep going. So, you know, I'm sure no doubt soon or even, you know, when you guys are ready to, if you want to plan, put in your dates for the following season, you're more than welcome to. The sooner we can get everyone's dates in the calendar and organise, the better for us and the more everyone's across it. So, yeah, it's really appreciate you guys um, making the time to, to do that work extra early and, yeah, hopefully we can keep it going. So, yeah. All right. Well, well, if that's, that's it, anything. we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.